All right. Well, hey, happy new year, everybody. Nice to see you all. Thanks for yeah. being here. Um, 2022, starting off the bang, but uh, I'm seeing some positive things happening. <laughs> if I squint. Um, okay, so we're going to do what we always do, which is exchange some knowledge on priority tribal adaptation and resilience data needs. Um, I think most of us know each other by now, but maybe not everyone. Um, Zoe, I think you did introduce yourself once before. Is that right? Can you I did, remind I us where you're from? I think you're, are you a grad student? Yeah, I'm a, a second year environmental health sciences student at UC Berkeley. And then I also am a graduate student assistant at OEHA. And for my capstone, I'm doing some a look at water justice on indigenous homelands in California. Okay, okay. awesome. Cool, we're glad to have you. Um, a couple more people just joined. Oh, it looks like I'm Josh Simmons today. I am not, I'm Angie. <laughs> um, but maybe do, since people are still getting to know each other, put yourselves in the chat, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just a little quick intro. Um, so we are happy today because after we get through our member announcements, we're gonna dive into a discussion with County of San Diego's um, human health services folks. So two of our members that have been coming to these meetings um, uh, have some really great tools we're going to share. It's going to be nice for us to have a local perspective. Um, if you've been with us, this is our eighth meeting, and we've talked through private tools, a tribal tool, well, a couple tribal tools, university tools, um, and then some public sector tools, state and federal. So now we get to hear from a, a local one. And um, I think it's a really good example to see how tribes and local governments can work together. They don't always, but in San Diego, there's a real attempt to, as we've seen. Um, and so uh, we really like Isabel and Chris, they've been working with us on the Tribal Climate Health Project and with Shasta at Paula. So uh, we get to hear from them today. Before we get to that, um, I don't see anybody else new that needs to introduce themselves. Actually, Katrina, I don't think you've been to this. Have you been to this meeting before? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, Tom uh, shared this with me. So happy to be here all. Um, I'm working with the Energy Commission as Deputy Public Advisor and my role as well as Tribal Liaison. So Tom Gates um, has, is moving on, passing the baton and he's uh, moving, working now as Tribal Advisor um, and supporting me in that transition. So good to meet y'all. Oh, we're, we're really glad that you're here. So, you know, this meeting is all about data, data tools and how we can possibly make more data accessible for tribes um, related to their vulnerability, their climate vulnerabilities primarily. Um, okay, so I wanna leave the floor open a little bit for folks that might have updates from their point of view, anything that may be a personal professional update, something from your organization that's on the topic of tribes, climate change and health and data <laughs> um, or anything you're just seeing in the sphere that others would benefit from knowing about. Or are we all just getting over our eggnog hangovers? <laughs> eggnog was hard to find, you know? Apparently eggnog was, uh, you know, kind of, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> hard to find. It was, it was. No, I read a thing about this, that, that eggnog was was at a, at a premium uh, were, this, this holiday I season. I didn't notice that. My, the, we had a definite cool. panic in the house when we couldn't find the eggnog yogurt at the store, <gasps> like the whole month of December. Now, my mom had a little bit of a freak out because she makes an eggnog punch for Christmas Eve and there was a smaller amount of it than normal. So, you know, um, I basically grabbed the bowl and ran out to the driveway and was like, <laughs> 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 uh, but I, I do have an announcement. Um, we haven't uh, started doing the outreach for it yet, but I just want you to be thinking about the uh, dates of what's our dates, Angie, July 13th and 14th. I think that's right. Is that what we decided? We are doing um, an in-person summit, you know, in-person, uh, obviously health willing um, for the Tribal Climate Health Project. And there will be uh, details to come, but at least I want to put that on people's radar if you're interested in um, coming out to Paula and uh, meeting with us for uh, uh, more of an in-person hands-on kind of a workshoppy summit. A tribal climate health summit so i don't know why it's not on my calendar that's very odd i should probably put it on my calendar um but <laughs> you want to tell uh, them the cute title 
Uh, oh, you know what? You're going to have to tell them because I don't remember it right now, except that it has a heart in it. And normally I don't like hearts, but I like this. Uh, so, well, it's, it's on vulnerability. We're focusing in on tribal climate health and vulnerability. So it's it's getting to the heart of climate vulnerability. And, that's what uh, it is. Yes, yeah. getting We're to the heart of take climate vulnerability. Support for for professionals that are working with tribes on building their own, on building their climate vulnerability, but it's, you know, it's knowledge building, skill building, but also sort of personal support, well-being support. Yes. And for probably uh, for most of the folks who are on this call, if anything, we would be reaching out to you as potential uh, presenters and experts to help us out with uh, with this and then um, introducing, or I, I should say inviting um, our tribal practitioners to come out and learn from the expertise of uh, this great group of experts that we've been pulling together each month. So we will give you more information on that once we've got it up on uh, our website and everything, but I just want you to kind of bookmark it for now. It is July 13th and 14th, 2022 in Paula. Yeah, in particular, if you know anybody doing some really interesting emerging research that tribes would want uh, you know, to be briefed on in, this, in the space of climate change and health, um, that would be really great. Um, you can always ping Shasta or I. Yes. Uh, cool, anyone else have any member announcements? I'll just mention a couple things. Um, obviously the California climate or the California well, the governor's proposed budgets come out. Um, super interesting. I don't, I haven't scanned it well enough to see if there's anything maybe there for us, but I know there's a big focus on climate, on resilience. I am, I am guessing they're probably, I actually, um, Asami, Asami, I think there has been an infusion in climate and health. Is that right? Have you heard of that? Uh, potentially, this is still the kind of the proposed. draft proposed budget. But yeah. Yeah. So it'd be a exciting. lot. Sounds exciting for you all potentially to kind of expand on what you're doing. So great, great. Uh, I also just wanted to follow up after our last meeting. We had Noah here, and it was really great. And I just wanted to let you all know they're so you know our members are so great, and I love our informal conversations. And it may seem like we're just having a lot of fun conversations around tools, but there's actually real work getting done. <laughs> um, and so the feedback that was provided to um, Thomas and Lori, they actually went back and kind of did some more investigating. And so they're out there trying to figure out how to get more FEMA data to plug holes in try you know the, the gaps in the data where we couldn't find tribes on the map. They're trying to plug those holes in one of their big coastal, it was the coastal some flood uh, tool. Uh, so exciting stuff. And, you know, they're reaching back out because it looks like they want a little bit more feedback. Um, and then along with that, you know, here at Prosper and, and the Tribal Climate Health Project, we're scouring that tool. You might be too on your end just to see what kind of indicators we might build in um, to our work with tribes. So good things happening. Um, okay. So anyone else before we move it along? Yeah, thanks, uh, Angie. I just wanted to mention uh, we, oh, definitely hey. appreciate, we definitely appreciated the feedback and uh, glad to follow up on that with uh, with you and, and Shasta regarding the uh, FEMA data issues on the, the Paula Reservation. So I'll uh, be happy to follow up with with Shasta uh, more on, on those issues. Uh, but it's a great uh, Great to experience to be discussing these data issues and and different um, agency data sets and some of the the challenges or issues on on tribal land. So thank you. Thanks, DJ. Totally glad you're back with us today. Um, okay, looks like there is a cool free training happening this summer on geocoding health data. Ooh, that is cool. Um, thank you. All right. I think with that, let's go ahead and just dive into our the meat of our discussion today. Uh, so we have Isabel and Christopher from the County of San Diego. Like I said, they've been great partners of ours. Um, I've seen a couple years ago, I think some demos of the tools, but uh, I'm just gonna hand it off to them and they're gonna share their screen and tell us all about it. Um, like always, this is an interactive discussion. So we'll hear a presentation first and then we all get to talk about lessons learned, what needs are still outstanding, what challenges have they faced, what, um, what could this look like? You know, what would it, what the, what would the experience of tribes be in tools like this? Okay, um, everybody, bear with me because I'm not used to sharing on Zoom. <laughs> what? We're 
have you been for the last two years? <laughs> we, uh, they, at the beginning of COVID, they just said, here's Teams and made us oh, all switch oh, to teams. Microsoft Teams. Teams so, is the devil. Teams, yeah. yeah, Zoom is so much better. And it should be down at the bottom, a little share screen. I made you a co-host, so you should have it. There's a bar. Okay. Yep, we see it. You can see it? Okay. Yep. Um, okay, uh, so I want to say, I guess for starters, good morning, everybody, and Happy New Year. Um, my name is Chris O'Malley. I'm the Senior Epidemiologist at the County of San Diego's Community Health Statistics Unit. We're under HHSA um, and PHS, um, the Community Health Statistics Unit. The bulk of what we do to kind of make it simplified for everybody is we're basically in charge of the population health data. So we will get data from the state, um, we'll gather data from different sources, and we'll put that out to the public for public consumption. Um, what we've kind of run into since we've kind of embarked on this great adventure that is COVID, um, COVID-19, was that a lot of our product, we were kind of just dropping people um, into buckets, like based on data availability. So a lot of times what would end up happening is we would end up um, not putting out a lot of data for um, some of our uh, uh, race ethnicity groups that were not um, necessarily, they, they didn't have as uh, large in numbers. So typically what will happen with my group is we'll get data requested and people, as I've, as the kind of the years go by, people are getting less and less interested in like a county number Everybody wants to know about their neighborhood. Everybody wants to know about like their particular city or location. Um, and so what ends up happening a lot of times is you'd produce these giant, and what we used to put up were giant spreadsheets of data that were um, typically, a lot of them were just filled with blanks because you couldn't um, show some of these smaller um, race or eth uh, ethnic groups in these areas because um, we, we would suppress the data at a certain level. So what we decided to do is Isabel and I, and Isabel, feel free to jump in anytime if you want to. Um, Isabel and I, we talked about it and we were like, well, we should really make sure that for some of these groups that maybe aren't represented in um, some of the data that we're putting out, because typically what would end up happening is you'd put out a data set that was um, maybe it would represent um, our Hispanic population or non-Hispanic white, non-Hispanic black. Um, and then we would um, sometimes lump together Asian and, and Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander, and then maybe have an other category, which isn't really a whole lot of use to people, especially if they're doing any kind of research. So what we decided is we would start with, would put together um, what we were calling the tribal brief. And this is up on our website. I put a link to our website in the chat. It's available as a downloaded PDF. And this is one of our new on um, products. And we put out a tribal brief and the tribal brief is basically taking the um, health data that we receive from the state and we break it up for our American Indian Alaskan native population. Um, for the 2019 iteration, it is just our non-Hispanic native Alaskan um, American Indian uh, population. But for the future iterations, and I'll let Isabel expand on that for a second, um, our plan is now that we are received the denominators for those um, of our American Indian Alaska Native um, residents that have Hispanic ethnicity, we've received denominators from our census holder, which is the San Diego Association of Governments, SANDAG. Um, they sent us the, the, um, the population data that they generate for that group. Um, this tribal brief in the future will contain our residents that may also be of Hispanic ethnicity, but are also um, American Indian Alaska Native. And did you want to expand on that a little bit, Isabel, before yeah, I go through the um, document? Sure, yeah. Since, since it's, two things will change. Um, one, yes, we'll be able to um, extract the health data for anyone who is AIAN stated in the, in the data set. 
regardless of ethnicity or any multiracial status, as they say, to will we'll be able to get everybody, regardless of their what else they may put in. Um, also, since we have the denominators for the tribal population as a whole, we'll be able to do the denominators, as he said, we'll, we'll have those so for rate calculations as well. And of course that if we can get everybody, then we have a larger sample size and more robust rates. And the other thing that we'll be doing is <clears throat> we've been talking to uh, California tribal epicenters uh, folks, and we will do a rolling multiple year aggregation um, in order to have stable rates over time. So for example, we could do uh, 18, 19, 20 would be combined and rates calculated for that. We may go to five years. Um, and then every year we would just increment one and produce the rates for those groups and prevent them either as a brief and or other products that um, Chris will talk about. But that's, that's where we're going with that so that we'll have a larger and more robust um, sample size, which will mean more data all around for everybody in our tribal communities. This would all be at the uh, San Diego County level. Um, if at some point people are specifically interested in going below that level, we can talk, but that's not something that we will uh, push out publicly. Um, so we'll just stay at the county level. And that's that update. And so our current travel brief that we have up right now, we basically, will, we break it up into these five sections and we'll break it up into behavioral health, communicable disease, chronic disease, injury, and maternal and child health. And what we do is we'll get, um, we'll get data from the state. Um, we'll get the death data from the state. We get birth data from the state. We get um, emergency department uh, discharge data as well as uh, patient discharge data from uh, hospitals. And what we do in our brief is we're gonna, we break it up into those sections. And um, once I get out of the share, I can actually drop this document in the chat. So it's easier for you guys to just have it. Um, it's publicly available on our website, um, but I didn't wanna to spend too much time rolling through the uh, PDF. Let me move over to, so now, when I, you heard me mention it kind of at the top when I was talking about a lot of this data, we'd have it up um, previously on our website is like spreadsheets, basically downloadable Excel spreadsheets where you could download the data um, if you wanted to look at specific uh, populations. Um, we found that people just did not want to do that. <laughs> they did not want to go through giant spreadsheets and look for their data point that they were, con um, that they were interested in. And so what we did was um, we started utilizing Tableau more. Um, so we, we decided to do is take the data, that population health data, which we call the uh, community profiles. And we said, hey, why don't we just put them in Tableau dashboards and then people can kind of pull what they need and are able to access that. So if we go to our website and we go into the health data section, and I'll just pull up uh, HHSA regions and just kind of give you an idea what I'm talking about. Um, this kind of makes it more dynamic and then you can kind of look at what you need to look at by condition. Um, so if I was just interested in say diabetes and I was wanting to know about hospitalization from diabetes, I could switch the condition and outcome and that will switch it. And this is available to the public like on our website now. Um, that will switch it and you can look at the different conditions that we have listed, different outcomes, um, whether it's death, ED discharge, hospitalization, inpatient treatment, physical re uh, rehabilit rehabilitation or uh, SNF. And then you can scroll through the tabs and it's uh, the filter is connected. So if you switch to diabetes and hospitalization and you were to come over to the race ethnicity tab, um, you could look at that through each tab. So uh, race, ethnicity, age, gender, and then we put together the, uh, the lenses of health equity kind of on one page. Now you say, well, Chris, like AIN is not represented in this race, ethnicity tab, and that's 
one of our big concerns. So in the future, as Isabel stated, when we put together sort of these rolling years of data, what our plan is, is to take that population of our AIN residents who may or may not be of Hispanic um, uh, ethnicity, and we're going to produce a dashboard specifically for that population. Um, so they'll have their own dashboard similar to this up on our website. Um, and then the other nice thing about this tool is that if you found, if you had something of interest and you just wanted to uh, output it as a PDF or a PowerPoint slide, you can do that directly from here. So pull up the indicator that you were interested in if say, well, I'm only concerned about like uh, race ethnicity and I was just wanting to know about um, alcohol related disorders and ED discharge. Like you could just boom, go down, uh, produce a PDF or download a, uh, a PowerPoint slide. So hopefully by, we're hoping that by uh, later this spring, we're gonna have um, our new uh, tribal version of this um, tool, the community profile uh, Tableau dashboard tool will be available for that as well. Um, we also have, which is gonna be going up in the next week, um, our, what we're calling our health equity dashboard series, our racial equity dashboards. Um, this is not up on the website currently, but it's going to be going up soon. And this takes a lot of our, uh, the American community survey data and puts it out so that it's easily um, usable for the public. Um, a lot of times I've, I've had a lot of people, especially uh, community partners that request data through us that are like, I don't know how to utilize the census's website. I can't access all this community, American community sur survey data properly. So we kind of put it together for them like this so that they could easily look at certain things if they wanted to. Um, things like demographics, social determinants of health, social determinants of health by race ethnicity. So if I was like, I really want to know about, um, I'll just, um, grab one real quick here. I'm really interested in um, life expectancy, usual course of, uh, source of care, finding primary care. I could easily click to that dashboard instead of scrolling through all the all the many tabs. So of course, it's not going to work for me now. There we go. Um, and then I wanted to pull down um, finding primary care. And then I'll go back to, you can go back to the home tab. Um, I'm interested in standard of living. Do, um, poverty status. Um, and you can pull up poverty status. And it's just similar to the other tool where you'll be able to download PDFs um, and or uh, PowerPoint slides um, of the data slide and pull it up. Um, like, and then for instance, like this one, I've gotten this question quite a bit, but I'm sure a lot of people on this call already know um, the five-year estimates from the American Community Survey are late. Um, typically, we get them in December, and they're not. The census has put out saying that they're not going to be available until uh, March. Um, so that's why everything right now is 2015 through 2019, as far as American Community Survey goes. Um, but this will be. This should be up by next week. Um, that's the other thing I wanted to kind of mention to the group is that the website itself is uh, is going through like a full. We're basically going to do a big redesign. So you go back to this. It's going to look a lot different here in about seven to ten days. This is going to shift a little bit, but a lot of this stuff is still going to be available and at your fingertips. Um, One last thing I wanted to show, um, my group also produces uh, what we call the health equity dashboards. Um, they're also referred to as the geographic breakdowns for COVID-19. Uh, and I wanted to show one of those just real quick. Um, these are a little bit more crude and not dynamic because we just put them up as PDFs. Um, but this kind of was the, for us, was kind of like the big aha moment when um, kind of COVID first hit um, a lot of these groups were wanting to know, um, like our native um, Hawaiian Pacific Islander population, they were like, hey, what's going on with us with COVID? And so like we were producing these on a weekly basis and this, um, this is just generating the cumulative number. So cumulative rate 
and um, for the different um, groups, whether it be age group, race, ethnicity, um, and then looking at things like hospitalization, ICU rate, mortality rate. Um, and then this is broken out by region. Um, a lot of the data you'll find on our website, um, we'll break it up by, in the county, we'll break it up by our different, um, our six HHSA regions. Um, but we also have data available on our website via city um, and what we call sub-regional area, which is sort of like um, we take, we allocate uh, zip code data to smaller areas in the county. And um, typically, when we talk about small area data for population health data with our group, it's typically um, city and SRA will be the lowest level of data you'll find on our site. Um, we're hoping to get to the point where we're starting to produce stuff by census track um, when available and when we can. Um, we're also in the process of uh, starting to implement some new um, California HHSA censoring guidelines. So we're going to um, utilize those guidelines to move forward on um, putting out some more uh, health indicator data by census track in the future. Did I miss anything, Isabel? I, I feel like I'm just blabbing and blabbing. I think that's that's the basics. I dropped the, um, the link to our website, which is sdhealthstatistics.com. But I, I put the actual link in there so people can um, and then can look at a number of different things. Now, do you all have any specific dashboards or place like if, if one of the tribes, one of the 17 tribes in San Diego County came to you and said, hey, we need some climate, some indicators that are relevant to climate impacts associated with health, where would you point them? <clears throat> that depends. Yeah. Um, we don't break stuff out, you know, and that would be by, I presumably you'd be interested by geographic area. Um, probably at this point, you could, you could really, we're not going to have the kind of long, you know, long, long, long data that you'd find in, in like climate data. Um, we do surveillance on heat illness and injury, we produce annual data. And that data, um, those data are mapped, we map those rates um, for the, like the whole population. So if you wanted to see where heat is in the area, regardless of who is impacted, you know, where residents are impacted, that could be some information they could find useful. Um, if you're looking for more specific diseases, like we have ED discharge rates, one that often people look to as a good indicator of public health and we do have that data at at the sub-regional area or the city area so that could be something if somebody wanted to look at total rates but if it was something like specifically the AIM community well stiff that that just that's not a large uh, those data tend to be de-identified due to small numbers so, or even and, maybe not a tribe, like say just others in the county or even the county itself. It's like, we're doing a vulnerability assessment. Um, are there specific data points that they would ask you for from this, from these tools? We're not sure what the, what people are using. Usually if yeah. they come to us with a specific request and it's something like ED, ED asthma rates, We've got that. Right. We've been asked for that kind of stuff many times. And then we could point them to the website. And if they wanted maps, we produce maps, which will be going up. And that will be um, total population and by medical outcome or deaths. So it depends on what, what's not been de-identified, but it would be available. Um, ED and heat are pretty much the most common and obvious things that people point to, they look for, oh yeah, bad air quality or right. fire, yeah. smoke and fire. But these are annual data, right? This isn't gonna be um, the data Exotic. per week. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? But sometimes people have questions that might be more specific that we don't typically push out to the public, but they can come and ask for it. They could say, I wanna know kidney disease you know, trends and we could 
we could actually fill that request and in a number of different ways that, that they might be looking for. It might be geography, it might be just total counts, it might be just total, just a rate, you know. So we do, some of those are, are behind the scenes stuff that we do and that we share on, upon request. Um, I know there's a, at least one question here in the chat, uh, but just following up on that one last, it just reminds me a lot of the work we've been doing with um, CTEC, so California Tribal Epidemiology Center, where they're in the kind of the same boat as you, where they have access to all this health-related data, epidemiological data, um, but they weren't really in the business of producing these climate and health data sets yet. They're tr yes. they're kind of thinking into it, and, yep. and so we were trying to do a do some work with them to have this mutually beneficial outcome to say let us help you define what what data you have that could be considered really valuable to tribes when they go to do their vulnerability assessment and we set up a protocol where we basically have a uh, now a data set where it's attached to a data request so a tribe can now across california can say i want the climate and health data set that you've produced and they know now where to go in their you know their own data to capture it and spit it out in the in the parameters that we've asked for, and that saves them time. It saves the tribes time to figure it all out, one you know case by case basis. I'm just mentioning it because maybe you know, if you find yourself getting a lot of these requests, having something like a standard protocol handy to well, that's already kind of considered it all could be helpful, and we can even share what what that it would is. be great. That would be great, and, and we're also like we touch bases occasionally with the uh, CTEC. Um, yeah local I, that would be great to do even more i mean if that was if there were some sometimes it feels like we need to set up a little bit more close association with certain groups um we have talked i think we've talked in the past with um when jason and Durrett from the state were you know both available and gone on to do other things um there has been some data, uh, sort of a, a group of uh, medical codes that were associated, in this case, it was with heat, illness, and injury, sort of as a large bucket. And that's something that hmm, we never worked out the procedures or the data to do that, but that would be an interesting thing to do because it's not just a heat code. It's not just you got heat stroke or you were dehydrated. It's a little, there's a broader section of people that go to the ED or go to the hospital. And heat is a related issue, but it wasn't necessarily captured and known in their experience, right? That, that might have been found later in the text records of uh, you know, somebody's medical care. Yeah. But we could look for that, you know. So yeah, you've got all the ingredients and all these people exactly. probably want it and they like and there's just yeah. like this bridge that needs to be built or something and exactly. I actually wonder there's probably like some California or even national public health association right like may, maybe somebody's figured out you know a protocol that works for local governments I don't know yeah I saw some of the questions in the chat um yeah. and I uh, saw it thank you um to uh, Jessica for putting that link to Tableau to explain Tableau. Tableau is a, a visualization tool. Um, we're kind of, I don't want to call it a power struggle, but like the business folks and the health folks, it's like the health folks want Tableau, the business folks want Microsoft uh, Business uh, BI. I know it's uh, anyone who's used Tableau, there's a way, uh, it's just not as high of a learning curve and it's way easier to use. Um, I, I can attest to that. Like I literally built a dashboard in a day, like the first day I ever used it. Um, so it's definitely very easy to use. The other nice thing about it is with the Tableau public feature, which we're utilizing on our website, um, we can put those dashboards up without having to worry about the firewall. They're not behind the firewall. So we're not, um, we're not kind of uh, stuck with a bunch of IT costs too by utilizing the Tableau public feature. Um, the 2020 data, I see the question about uh, when's the newer data going to be available. Typically, we're kind of like a year and a half behind. Um, this year, or this past year, uh, the, uh, our, the data that comes from the state, at least our ED and hospitalization data, it came earlier than it usually does, which is nice. Um, they used to call that data Oshpod. I like to call it the artist formerly known as Oshpod. Uh, they're now calling it HKI. 
Um, so that HKI data is in um, Isabel, who is, does a fantastic job as our like data curation specialist, data manager. Um, the data is run. Um, now we just have to kind of go through, comb through it and make sure everything looks right as far as comparing um, to previous years and just seeing if there's any kind of drastic changes. Um, we, a few years back, we switched to um, what is called the HCUP standardization for grouping like the health indicator codes, grouping the ICD-10 codes for our uh, hospitalization discharges, our patient discharges and ED discharges. Um, AHRQ, I think there's like, there's buy-in from like, I wanna say it's like 48 states that use the HCUP groupings. And it's just an easy way for us to take these ICD-10 codes we receive from the state and group them into these health indicators. But as far as a date for 2020 data, we're looking at probably about six to eight weeks. And then this um, community profiles dashboard and our, some of our other dashboard products, you'll just be able to filter by year. We're gonna throw a year filter in there so you can just switch. If you're interested in looking at 19 and 20, you'll be able to filter on that. Uh, I see Tom has a question too. Tom Gates from CEC and he's asking, uh, and feel free to chime in Tom, but is there a way to select just the data that represents California Native American tribes membership of San Diego? Not, to, yeah, I'm not even sure of that question. We can only select what's in the, the, um, the health data record, um, which is, you know, you have like five categories to put race, so why not use Hispanic, non-Hispanic or something else, you can fill in. Um, so there's no, there aren't any questions about membership, um, nor possibly you might find some in-depth data once in a while, so there will be a specific tribal membership, but not, um, we, don't, we don't have access to those data. Yeah. Understood. Um, location data, uh, would you be able to tie, maybe not membership, but residents within a reservation boundary? I know that that's going to probably contribute to that problem of small data set. and, and all Well, that would totally, that would, yeah. we can get down to the sub, typically the sub-regional area, and we, we have done that in the past, but um, CTEC advised against doing that, except at the request right. of someone, you know, of, of someone from a tribal agency or uh, organization okay. or something. So Not, they, we so. push that out, but oh, they could totally ask and you could say, well, this is the area, uh, you know, Palomar, Julian, Palma, you know, and we, we could map it and look at it and go, yeah, we got some numbers there here. This is what they're, you know, what, what they are. But that's not something we would routinely do or push out, even though, you know, just as best practices, we don't typically do that. But if requested, yes, we can, we can provide what we can provide. I mean, we can, you know, within the, the, the de-identification guidelines and, and all that where we couldn't, but yeah, we're that, happy like to try follow and up on. Does, do you get IHS data? Like anybody, like if say have a tribal member goes to a clinic that is not a hospital that's mandatory mandated to report like you probably just don't get that right we don't get any of that that's that's definitely the that's tribal right. epicenters yeah, um, yeah. It, it seems like it would be nice if they would like to be fed our data and they could build their own story you know that would be more yeah but no we, we don't um, yeah we don't we that. don't receive the community clinic and, data and we don't receive the um like we won't get any of the military hospitals or the va they wouldn't be included in the in the state yeah. data poll either. Yep. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So there's other questions here. I want to make sure we get to all of them. Lori, do you want to do you want to flesh this comment out a little? I just said a kind of a. Uh, I was looking at the San Diego data. Is Harbison and Crest a combination of Harbison and Canyon and Crest? I love that. I love that that yep. question came. Isabel, you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah, that's actually, it is true. It was a combination okay. of those areas that uh, Sandag created okay. uh, when they, we create things called sub-regional areas. Those are aggregated census tracts. It makes sense. Tracks. I used to live in Harbison Canyon. That's the only reason I'd notice. Yeah, and that's that's why they, they put this together to represent the community. And then they're with Harbison Crest, 
there is also an issue when you look at census tract level data and all of our data the, for health data comes from that because the census tracts is where the population resides, but the zip code might be what somebody reports. So there was this huge mismatch between, you, know, you could have a hundred cases in the zip code that were assigned to Harvardson Press and the population was six, you know, so yeah. you, you get wonky. So that's where the, there is a, an entity of geography that we publish out before we were but I, I, I bet you were able to raise the GDP of Harbison Canyon substantially by adding. Oh crest yeah, in. there's no yeah. There, we don't even differentiate. We would we used to co combine and we still produce that rate. Harbison Press El Cajon. Yeah. As a stabilizing thing, but now that we actually allocate, we can push out just a number for Harbison Press. But it is that area is problematic. In but more ways than one. Yeah. yeah. So yep. anyway, yeah, you are correct. That is where that comes from. I have a whole bunch of questions about this, um, although I know we, we time is relatively short, but it, relating back to uh, to Tom's you know question about being able to uh, maybe pull out the uh, tribal members for San Diego tribes, I mean, I could, first of all, I think this is really terrific and I, it, it makes me realize that you've come a long way since we first started these conversations and we were basically told, sorry, no, we can't provide any of this data. Now I'm sort of on the opposite side of it where some of these tribal uh, communities are so small that, you know, if I go over there and it says, oh, look, there was uh, out in La Posta, there was a heart attack. I'm going to be like, oh, I know that person because there's only 12 right. people in La Posta. Right. Yes, exactly. And that's why we didn't, we wouldn't do it unless some from La Posta said, we'd like to have some more, you know, hospital, do you have any hospitalization on anybody in this area? And we could look and we'd say, nothing we can give you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I, it's it just amazing. Mean, yeah. It also might mean there were 20 people or, but we still, we wouldn't publish it out. We would fill a request for the tribe if they asked for it. Right. But we would not be filling it for anybody who just wants to know that answer. Right. Potential. I mean, that would be a part of a larger discussion um, of, that, you know, right now. But, however, just, so far that we haven't had those questions, you know. It's just, it's, it's just something I try to keep in mind. Yes. Uh, bridging that, that uh, divide between needing the data so that we can make plans and know what's going on in our communities, but also protecting yes people's privacy and, and we know that even when people opt into um, you know aggregated data collection services that supposedly are all anonymized it only takes a few data points to be able to triangulate into a specific individual yeah. and you know I yeah. don't really care you know if somebody wants to know that I you know went and got treated for migraines or something I you know I'm mean, like fine whatever but obviously there's going to be some stuff that that is very very sensitive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's a tough it's a tough line to straddle. And currently, currently the 2019 <laughs> data is suppressed at um, any uh, cases less than five. So anything under the count of five is is suppressed. You won't see it. It'll just be it'll just be show up as a blank. Um, even if it's a zero, we don't even put it in as a zero. Right. Um, going forward, um, when we make this transition to California HHSA. We're going to start suppressing at a higher level, so it's going to be 11. So anything under 11 is going to be um, censored. Okay. And and as you know, we've talked about anything that we push out for a dashboard or whatever would be at the county level for the Native American population. Right. And, and I said only, but it, that doesn't mean they someone from one of the reservations couldn't come and make a request, or someone from the you know said I I want to know more. Can you tell me where? that might be something that is appropriate, but just pushing it out publicly, no. Well, I love this approach um, and uh, I had never heard of Tableau before today. So now I am excited about, about that, especially if it's, if it's user friendly, um, but uh, it, and I don't need numbers, but is there a cost associated with that? Yeah, it's not free. No. <laughs> well, we wish it were free. No, none of them are free. I, I don't know. Sometimes there's open source stuff that they're like, yeah, do it for yeah. free oh, until yeah. you're an addict and then they'll start charging it for you. 
you know, charge yeah, for it. It's worth it though. We don't have it, but I wish we did. Yeah, uh, more and more agencies are, are using it because it is. And there are other, you know, Esri has some nice, really nice products and lots of people yeah. do like Power BI, but boy, I see Tableau now. It's like, oh, right and left. It is because it, it, it really is something that the, the learning curve is so much smaller. Okay. They also the they also have like, deals, Shasta. <laughs> yeah, I can. I we can pay for it. I'm not worried about that. But uh, <laughs> but they they like to partner with different agency, and I think tribes would be a big feather in their cap, so to speak. Well, and yes. Esri does that too, where we get tr okay. uh, tribal uh, GIS licenses are are gratis, uh, which is great. But I'm also thinking about how this would integrate with something like uh, the the story mapping that Esri does, yes. um, and that's what I was thinking is that this looked a lot like story maps, and so now my wheels are spinning for all sorts of other um education and outreach types of, of work that i'm doing beyond the climate change stuff so there might be there is one and uh, we, we talked about it a little bit a couple months back and um that's the with some of the data that comes from esri um that might be there's there's nothing that you could get that is that is in their their market research data that is anything other than adult or um by area Right, so there's no, you can't break it out by, you know, tribal association. You can't even get it by men or women. I mean, it just is not the thing. But you can break it out by area and you can look at tribal areas. So if that's something that you might wanna look into, even I can have a talk because like it's easy enough to, you know, just say, oh, there's some, some health data, but I don't know whether it passes the giggle test um, because, you know, if you look at, you have all the, the tribal areas in San Diego County and you look them up and you get, this is the number of people who said they bought nine or smoked nine packs of cigarettes in the last month or per week for the last month or whatever the, the metric is. I, you would need to be an educated eye, which I don't have to say, this is, this, this is the community as opposed to this is the community because it's estimates based on an area, not a specific set of interviews with a specific group. But it, there may be some things of interest if you ever want to talk about it. Right. Shoot the list of quest, survey questions and you can say, you know, yeah, I'm interested because we actually have those data down to a ridiculously small area. I, and this is great. And I think it, it uh, gets back to, um, uh, Katrina had a question, you know, do you know how much uh, this is happening in other counties, you know, what kind of sharing is there in other counties? Because, you know, the work that Angie and I are doing is it's not supposed to be just for San Diego. We're trying to get this out to a bunch of places. So, you know, I, I know I'm proud of my home county that you guys are on the cutting edge, but uh, do you know of anybody other, uh, anybody else who's doing this? There's been a lot of, as far as knowledge sharing, um, there's been coordination, like there's been a lot more of that ever since COVID, but it's been COVID specific. Um, the the tableau user group meetings have been good because that's been getting us together with other southern california groups that are also using tableau so there's kind of that knowledge sharing as far as building the dashboards um the one thing that's been bad because of covid has been some of the user groups that would contain other um, epidemiologists from other counties like for i'll just use the death data as an example like the verbus data like i don't think the verbus um, users group has met in a while um, so like that would typically have people from other um, counties and municipalities um, discussing questions that they have about the death data. And I don't think they've met in a while, probably because of COVID. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe um, CDPH might want to chime in here because yeah. they know that, you know, they're doing their brace program. They work with counties a lot. I know that like city of slow has gotten some awards about their climate and health data. So like, there's like two buckets here. It's like taking your data and applying it to the, through the lens of climate change and taking your data and applying it through the lens of tribes. And those are like a Venn diagram. And then in the middle, that's what, that's what we need. <laughs> um, and so I wonder maybe Asama, do you want to chime in a lot at all? If you're still there, is he still there? Yeah. Or maybe he's yeah. taking so it's really interesting to hear about, and I was I was wondering the same thing with Katrina's question, whether you, or not you've talked to other counties that want to do the same and are have different barriers to that, and what those barriers might be, whether they're 
cost or technical capacity. Um, but but we do have so so with what Angie mentioned with the the proposed budget, um, there would be uh, a a huge increase in our team size in. Um, they'd be adding to potentially a, a syndromic heat surveillance kind of support unit so to oh, help, yeah. help have, which would excited. be really exciting. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. So, so potentially that might be coming down the pipeline, and then, and then we also have two unfilled positions on my team currently that we're going to be hiring for for um, supporting counties and local health departments and in. in and I imagine that this kind of effort could be a really interesting one to try to support um, more broadly. So I, I do think, um, Chris, I don't know if, if you have been contacted by other counties that are interested, but I would be really interested to hear who they are so I could take that back to our team. Yeah, no one's reached out so far as far as in terms of the Tableau dashboards. Um, I know, I just use COVID as an example, because I know in terms of COVID, like when we're on the state call, which we just had prior, prior to this for the modeling, the CalCAP modeling call, um, there's typically a lot of uh, different um, counties present at that call and everybody's sort of kind of presenting their obstacles, be they a large county or a small county. Um, but no, I haven't had anyone reach out from any of the neighboring counties at all about this yet. Question, are they talking about tribal data too in those calls at all? Um, it's typically more just um, for the modeling, it's it's being able to forecast out. So like just they're typically talking about like how can we make predictions or how can we tell the public this is what we're going to expect based on um, the different models that they're tracking. I don't see other um, chat questions, but are there other questions that people have? This has been um, super interesting. I yes. just, my mind is flooded with uh, this, a country full of counties trying to help tribes and you guys are probably on the forefront. Um, and, and how many more ways there are to do this? But you know what I would like to do is just, you know, I've got, I owe, three tribes in San Diego County and adaptation plan. And there's this intersection between that and what we're doing with the SoCal, the uh, Southern California Data Development Project. Long story short is we could like test this out a little bit. I could make a data request based on what I know that tribes actually need um, for data and we can see how it goes. And so we can work back and forth a little bit and see what you can produce for us. Yeah, we'd be totally excited about that. That'd and, be great. Yeah, that could be like the start of if you wanted to develop a protocol for it, Awesome. Yeah, and I'd, I'd love to see you uh, talk about this at our upcoming summit, you know, since it's close by and you guys can come on up to Paula and uh, we can um, we can make other counties and, you know, because we're, we're asking people to come from all over the country for this, um, but we can give other people a taste of what's possible um, and then uh, and, and show them that San Diego kicks ass. You guys are going to give government <laughs> workers a good name. <laughs> we try. Huh? try. try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely next meeting to um, once the redesign goes through for the website, we'll give you a quick overview of the redesign because um, mm -hmm. we're gonna move some things around and um, there's gonna be a big health equity focus to our front page, so we'll we'll show you the redesign real quick. Well, okay. nice work, you guys, uh, and thanks, you know, you're giving a lot of care and attention to trying to serve tribes well, even within all the limitations, which we totally understand. So thank you. Thank you for spending the time. Um, our next meeting is going to be a month from now, and we are going to have Walker Wheeland from OEHA, um, who's going to talk to us about Cal Enviro Screen, which wasn't really intended to be used for climate vulnerability, but I use it. And yeah, it's really data. It's, it's a no to. Uh, yeah, they have so they have a 4.0 version that just yeah. came out, and mm -hmm. um, some interesting updates when it comes to how it applies to tribes. So we get to hear all about that um, next time. So we hope you come back and join us. Um, any last comments for today? You guys are all rad. Thank you. Really love my, <laughs> love data. my data folk. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Have a great Bye, day, guys. Bye. Uh, thank you. Thanks, everyone.